Good evening, everybody. We'll, meet, we'll wait a minute or two for everyone to join. I'm excited for the session today. So we have three interesting guests who will be joining us today. So a warm welcome to all of you. Uh, namaste and a very good evening. Um, I'm back again with another episode of Coach Connect. So I'm Priyanka. I'm from Team Matrix. And I'm excited to be here today for an insightful topic. So we've got amazing people joining in. We have some guests who are joining us today. Uh, people who are joining us from Vimeo directly. Please, uh, please, uh, you can text us, you can ask us the, your queries and we'll address, we'll try to address uh, the concerns and the queries. We also have the webinar, we can share the webinar details later for everyone who's no one who's going to miss it or join it later. So um, uh, for everyone who's joined us for the first time or, uh, and also for everyone who's been joining us for like uh, since a year, we've had this amazing Coach Connect platform where we invite people who've been associated with Matrix, know about their journey, know about their experiences, learn from them, and also mostly related to coaching, which is an emerging language of the world. So Coach Connect is a wonderful platform. And um, I work as a Coach Connecting Officer, and I interact with amazing people who've been associated with Matrix. So I would like to uh, thank Dr. Paras for creating such a wonderful platform for all of us. So in relationship with this discussion today, the topic, as we all know, is decoding contracts. So exploring the importance of legal and psychological perspective. So we just have like not one, but we have three guests today. And I'm sure it's going to be a very wholesome and an enriching experience. Uh, in relation to this, before we begin, I recently watched a Netflix uh, series, which is, which is called as Mamla Legal Hair. And I'm, I'm not sure whether uh, you guys have watched it. But um, after this webinar, I'm really sure that you'll go back and you'll revisit and you'll watch the session because I believe words, signatures, contracts, agreements, these are all pretty subjective as well as objective elements of how we deal with people. And I think this session today is going to be a very meaningful and I'm sure very insightful because on Coach Connect platform, there's been record attendance of a lot of leaders, coaches attending our webinars. We've got amazing feedback from people that our sessions are really wholesome. And I really thank all of you for taking out this time every one, every month where we have these sessions and we have an heartful interaction with our experts. So I'm really curious today uh, about this session personally as a psychologist also, because we're going to deal with a very sensitive and a challenging uh, aspect of coaching, which is contracting. And now that we have the best of the both worlds, so let me begin with uh, introducing without any delay with our three guests. So first, I would like to welcome Mr. Siddhant Jain. He is a practicing advocate and an expert with ENY, which is Ernst & Young. It is, as we all know, is uh, amongst the world's top four consulting firms. Welcome, Siddhant. Welcome to Coach Connect. Hello. Hi, Priyanka. It's very Hi. nice connecting with you. Thank um, you. Thank you. I'm excited because um, we're going to have to, I, I will take this opportunity to meet, uh, to you all to meet. Uh, next, we have Miss Maitri Gandhi. She's an advocate, again, working with Ernst & Young. We've got amazing two people from ENY today since past three years. She's completed her LLB from the Government Law College, Mumbai. And also, uh, uh, I would like to introduce her as she's done BA in psychology and economics from St. Xavier's. Welcome, Maitri. Welcome to Coach Connect. Hi, Priyanka. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm really excited for this session. I know. Yes, yes. Uh, um, I'm sure that, you know, with you two joining us uh, as advocates, it's going to be a very meaningful session. And then today I'm super excited also because we have none other than founder of Matrix, Dr. Paras Daitankar, also as our guest today. Hi, Dr. Paras. We Hello. all know Dr. Paras. He's an ICF, MCC Life and Leadership Coach since two decades in this industry and founder of Matrix. So it feels great to have three experts today. How are you all feeling? Excellent. I think uh, this is one of the very important topic for today's coaches to be sensitive towards uh, themselves and towards the relationship that they're working, engaging themselves with clients and uh, and contracting. I think there's a lot that's going to come from uh, uh, Advocate Siddhant and uh, Advocate Maitri. So we're really looking forward for this powerful power pack session. 
True. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Parvas. Moving on without any delay. Um, uh, uh, like Maitri Siddhant and Dr. Paras, I believe that we're addressing a very important topic, as Dr. Paras said. It's a, a relationship, a transaction that we have between people, sometimes properties, and that's contracts. Okay, there are several coaches, leaders with us today, and I'm sure it's going to bring ahead them bring a lot of clarity. And now with you three on board, Dr. Paras, I would like to begin with you. First things first, like you know, now we have several leaders and coaches joining us also. How do you begin with this process of coaching as a journey? Just give us some insight. Sure. So, Namaste, everybody, and uh, thank you, uh, Priyanka, for this wonderful question. Uh, I think I would like to uh, divide this into two stages. The stage one is uh, when I have a potential prospect who is exploring to go for a life leadership coaching or any of the coaching. So, you, I, I offer life leadership coaching. Uh, so if any, in my private practice. So if I get a call, the first thing is my duty for sharing information and education. So sharing information and education is not about just putting a message on WhatsApp. This is what we do. The first thing is I talk to them. I check with them and explain it to them what exactly they're looking at. Uh, many of them have no idea. <clears throat> they just say that I heard this uh, very fancy word about life coach and we would like to explore this. I said, sure, let's start with understanding what do we do in coaching? And what is coaching? Okay. Uh, then it also goes with the scope of the sessions, like what's possible, and importantly, uh, what are the limitations in this journey? Okay, because <clears throat> because coaching is very niche and it's very important for them to understand. Uh, it's not a therapy. So so that first thing that we need. Oh, it's not a mentoring. Uh, once they're very clear about it, I definitely I also share them certain videos and blogs uh, from our site to give them an understanding about how the coaching sessions will look like. Then how their journey may look like if they opt for a, a short-term coaching session or a long-term coaching session. Uh, very important is to also share the administrative process. Okay, that could be uh, your you know in terms of uh, your SLA and maybe service level agreement, and then also informing about a certain etiquette what is okay and not okay in this whole co-creative process. I also look at this word as partnership. So coaching for me is, has taught me a very important thing is to be <clears throat> with each other as equal partners. Um, and once once my client, is, uh, once the potential inquiry is ready to join the session, the first thing I do is I take the service level agreement signed and then it's important to talk about the goals, the ideas, the aspiration that they're looking for from the session. Um, and not uh, very few uh, people are aware, but it's very important to go a little detail here. Let's take an example in the administrative level. I would like to really talk about uh, how your timings are going to be scheduled. What is the rescheduling process? Uh, what are the safety measures? Because I also offer face to face sessions. So if there is a fire in case of fire, how do we really safeguard ourselves? Uh, also letting them aware about it's OK to be vulnerable. And it's safe. Uh, all the information that you share is completely confidential uh, by the ICF Board of Ethics. And, uh, and also, uh, being a practitioner, it's important to keep things at a complete confidential level unless you're harming self or others. Uh, the other things that uh, I'm very mindful is when a client is coming for a session, I inform them about the waiting room, or what are the refreshers, the cloak room, the CCTV, so psychologically, I'm actually supporting them, building trust and partnership that, hey, you're safe here. OK, um, so also partnering them in terms of the social media communication, such as WhatsApp or phone calls. OK, what is OK in this partnership? OK, like when do we when can we connect when we cannot connect? OK, so that really helps to establish very clear boundaries to kickstart the coaching sessions. So the keyword that I look at, look, at, look at in stage one is building trust and partnership. <clears throat> and once they join the session, I think I, I partner with them on their goals and aspirations. Uh, towards the mid level, mid sessions that we come, so I take ongoing feedback. Okay, in terms of uh, how far have we reached? Uh, can we celebrate success with the milestones achieved? And also correcting any course uh, for the remaining sessions. And the most important thing that I look at is towards the end of the program is having a closure for coaching journey. So I think this is how I would visualize when I work with the my process. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
it, it's it's amazing because we uh, actually coincidentally I asked such an important question to Dr. Parasa because someone who is really wanting to know the process it's it's become a crash course for them with your answer. Thank you. It's for explicitly telling us you know what are the steps. I I understand that you mentioned about contracting, so I I think that it's going to it's it's a very important element of how we begin with coaching as a process with everything set probably on paper. Although you say that it's a partnership, but yes, it has to be neatly designed, structured. So, on the same lines, uh, thank you, Dr. Paras. On the same lines, uh, Mr. Siddhant, could you tell us from a legal perspective, uh, aligning to what Dr. Paras said, what are the key elements that would be included in the SLA and take agreement that Dr. Paras had us to understand? What are the key elements? Okay, so starting with key elements, I think that firstly, uh, scope of services. Okay, so as Paris mentioned, uh, that you have a lot of uh, different type of coaches. Okay, so in that case, what happens is scope of services is a very important term because that may vary from every client to client, uh, whom you intake as a coach. So having a clear scope of service is very important. So in a scope of services, in a coaching agreement, it highlights each specific offering that a life coach can provide or a spiritual coach or a motivational uh, speaker or anyone if you see they you can highlight what is the uh, service that you are going to provide so that the other person has clarity regarding that for instance the coach might be trained in assisting clients dealing with bereavement in a grief coaching or uh, which the techniques that they use and uh, all the coaching scenarios they might guide clients on a faith based in a spiritual coaching so uh, there are different types of coaching that is available here yes. okay so the coaches can use different ways techniques strategies and whatever they use they need to clearly specify everything so that uh, the other person coming in for coaching has clarity exactly. then uh, all such coaches have to adhere to icf competencies uh, because then adhering to that can help uh, the client also understand the clear boundaries so uh, this is the thing about scope of services then your then secondly uh, what the other thing comes is duration and session details so what happens is uh, the element relates to the time frame commitment from both the client and the coach in context of life coaching let's take an example of a grief coach considering the sensitive nature of grief the coach might suggest a longer duration maybe weekly sessions over 6 months allowing the client adequate time for healing and progress so but uh, on the other hand in other types of coaching uh, the time frame might vary from uh, client till to client till so there it becomes very important that both the people have agreed to a specific timeline because if you are starting with a certain timeline thinking that the other person might know but you are a coach chair the other person is not okay yeah. so he mm-hmm. is uh, doing something for the first time here so that clarity of thought he will get once you uh, clear to him that mm-hmm. this is the time frame that it might take mm-hmm. uh, because you are a coach there so this communication is very important here then after that comes the most important issue that the uh, clients have with you that is confidentiality okay so having a paramount confidentiality thing in your agreement it will always help the other person comfortable with you as paras just mentioned in the above uh, thing that he just uh, said that he wants to make people feel comfortable and at home while they are here so that they can open up and speak up properly so having a confidentiality clause gives them clarity that uh, the data or the things that they are sharing uh, might be personal professional or anything that is very safe with the coach and they can trust the person once they trust the person the uh, the coaching becomes more easier because then they start to open up then fees and payment so uh, the another aspect of it is like uh, what is the fees or uh, structure that you have set up uh, then because in coaching what happens is uh, like in for instance you have a fixed rate for a longer duration or a shorter duration you have different offerings so here what happens is in any type of coaching you always need to have clarity with the other person that what are the offerings that you are uh, offering and then what he is accepting accordingly then uh, the next 
next thing is cancellation and rescheduling this is the most okay. important problem i guess that uh, coaches face okay? okay because life's unpredictability often leads to the need for rescheduling or cancelling appointments so okay. if you are a icf coach a life coach can devise a policy which protects their time and still offers flexibility to the client okay but here what the biggest issue that arises is if uh, i am if i am a coach and the other person is coming to me so here uh, rescheduling is going to happen that the coach knows okay but yes. we cannot have uh, such implied things okay you need to clearly state in your uh, uh, sla that what are the things that might happen what are the conditions that might happen if you cancel uh, a day before or two days before what are the things because okay. that clarity will give the other person also clear uh, outing that you need to have flexibility okay flexibility is very important here but the other person knows what are the conditions that will apply if there is a rescheduling mm -hmm. then what happens is uh, you need to give clear uh, what do you say waivers that if uh, while you are coaching okay the biggest important thing that comes is that this is not a financial advice or this is nothing of that sort yeah. so you need clarity that uh, such waivers will always apply then you need a termination clause now uh, if i am contracting you with you regarding a specific coaching uh, part then what comes in here is if i need uh, uh, if i need to go out of this contract okay after a specific okay. period of time the coach feels that there is no progress or the client feels that there is no progress they need a way out from here okay so then this is the most uh, this is the part where you create most disputes okay so it is better if the way out is clearly mentioned so that there is a smooth exit so or whichever party yes. that is there okay mm -hmm. for whichever party that is there yeah, exactly. and uh, then you have the jurisdiction issues okay like uh, what like if i have a dispute with you what is the legal course of action that can be taken against each party and such other things okay 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 so these are the important elements that you need to have in your contract okay. so then all uh, like i was as you were sharing uh, mr siddhant i was just noting it down so there are in all seven elements that a coach as really needs to understand in terms of so it, it's wonderful especially dr paras i see that there are many people who join our webinar and it's so good for all of them to know these at least there should be seven these key elements must have like, you know scope of services uh, like you know duration um, etc So I think these are uh, great points. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sadan, for helping us through this uh, key element, uh, uh, key element process. So that's pretty interesting. Now, uh, Dr. Paras, moving on in relationship, relationship with this. Now you've been in this industry for more than a decade, like two, like twenty years or more. From a psychological perspective, how coaching is like you know how contracting is important in coaching. What are your observations in this industry and experiences in two? private and corporate practice as dr sadant was telling us about the seven key elements how it is difficult how it is easy to you know establish this process and psychologically contract with corporations because now we're going to talk about two elements private and you know also corporate sure and so first of all uh, sadant that was a very powerful learning for um, powerful information that you shared okay with all of us and i'm grateful that because uh, it's very important for coaches to become more sensitive in terms of contracting uh, and when it comes to uh, not just psychological but also in terms of the uh, the written document the black and white which is very very important uh, if i look back to uh, from the psychological perspective i like to uh, you know share with uh, there are two definitions that are running back of my mind one of them is eric burns definition uh, a contract is an ex explicit bilateral commitment to a well defined course of action So when I hear the word explicit, that means it's very clear, express, not implicit. Okay, it's it's all explicitly put up. Okay, uh, either verbal, written. Okay, it's bilateral and not unilateral. Okay, and it's a commitment. That means you and I are accountable partners in this, uh, for for a very beautiful outcome that the client is looking in their journey. while the other definition that comes to my mind is setting clear boundaries for drawing constructive bridges 
I think every relationship is contracted today. Just think about it on certain accepted behaviors in form of etiquette, maybe be it family members, communication between family, what is okay, not okay. When there is a disturbance, that creates conflicts. Now, we don't have a don't need to have a legal system there, but then there is a lot of psychological communication happening time and again. What is acceptable form of behavior uh, with our friends, with social groups? That's the reason I say that our friends are wonderful friends, but they cannot be coaches because we, then there is no contract clear about are you my coach or are you my friend? Okay. Or even in social groups. So, so when it comes to working with clients, I think it's important to be very explicit and written communication so that there is no scope of ambiguity. So let me start what I have learned and what I practice as an ACTP or trainer in terms of training coaches as well. In private practice, I, I follow these three things, which is called administrative contract. Now, this contract word is not a written part here. I'm talking more about the verbal communication or setting up boundaries. Okay. So let me explain the administrative contract to you, what I've explained it to you, the CCTV, the, the refreshers, the clerk rooms, okay, uh, the fees, the timelines, when to contact, when not to contact, okay, uh, what is a communication time, rescheduling time. So all that I discuss in my private practice with the administrative space. Okay. Then comes the professional contract. Now, professional contracts are all about the goals. What are you here for? Okay, what are your aspirations? Where are you feeling stuck? Okay, so the coaching is all about reframing, helping the client to wherever they are to where they would like to go. And the site and the last part is the psychological element. That is something a little deeper we can go here because in psychological frame, I look at permission, uh, protection, and potency. Potency. Yeah. So permission is that uh, when when uh, diving into deeper areas of client space, are we taking enough permission? Okay. As simple as that, you know, you know, you meet a client at Starbucks. Would you like to say hi to that person? Many of them would say, yes, as a human being, we need to connect. And I say, are we really ethical about it? Because has a client told you explicitly that you can contact me outside our relationship? So that's a big question for everyone to look at that, from, uh, you know, how can we protect the client's interest? So permission is about how do we go deeper into client spaces? Are we taking enough permission? Is it okay for you to uh, to share about this? Is it okay for you as you're sharing a lot about this today in this conversation? Are you comfortable so far? Okay. Then comes this protection that is uh, how much deep we want to go, but is it safe to go there? Are you ready to go there? Okay. Unless my client is not ready, I, I do not get into any sort of pushing or probing that, you know, let's go there. So it's all about uh, how my client is ready for, to go for permission and protection. And that's where it leads to the potency, the potent energy of the client. It really helps them to establish trust and defines clear agreements or outcomes and helps clients to achieve their goals. So, so administrative contract, coaches need to remember professional contracts, psychological contract, and in psychological permission, protection, potency. That's the foundation of trust Okay, and you can have a wonderful communication with them and client can trust you. Like, hey, this is a confidential coach. I can really trust this person. Uh, while in corporates, uh, many professionals are certified as coaches today. So people are aware about what is coaching. But people may not be aware about how do we establish a confidentiality space, a trust space in this whole coaching session. So let's take an example. I get a call from a Spock. Spock is called a single point of contact. Maybe okay. an HR, l &D. Somebody senior, somebody from the organization, representing the organization has called me. That we would like to engage with you for a coaching. Okay. 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 And it's not that easy. If I want to engage with you coaching, let's start coaching from tomorrow. So I would first like to share with them the process. Okay. And uh, maybe uh, have a meeting with a stakeholder or the person who is a multiple stakeholder who is initiating this journey that, hey, we would like some of our employees or senior leaders to be coached. Okay. So uh, here it's important. I ask them the three things. What is your organizational goals that you would like uh, your, your uh, you know, your, your, the potential coachy client to go through? What is the professional goals and what are the personal goals? That, I mean, what are we able to, what, what can we work with? Yes. So organizational goals are more from the element of culture and values that we would okay. like to bring change in the culture or we would like to have certain values to be embedded more. Okay. 
right? While profession could be on certain uh, competencies, archive behaviors that we would like to either build in or they would like to develop. And if, if there is a scope for if any personal coaching as well allows them, okay, or personal goals can be allowed as well. So there is a clear agreement where the stakeholders, the spark, but what we are missing here, many of them could miss here, is the client, okay, or the potential client or the coach. Yes, okay. nice. So, do we really take the coachy also in the account and say that okay, uh, you know, even coachy needs to be a part of the meeting? So, once the spark is done, once the spark and stakeholder, now it's important mm -hmm. to educate them that can we also have a, have a conversation with the coachy, mm -hmm. okay, explaining to them what they do. And then if there is a frequency that matches that, hey, I would like to work with this coach, I'm okay. That's the element of choice. That's what we are activating. And once choice is activated, I feel that, okay, I have a choice. I just don't have to work with Sidang, Aparas, or Spriyanka. I can choose from the selected one. That's a time where uh, the trust and you know the confidentiality is built up, the trust is built up that, hey, this person is not uh, not a management person representative. He's somebody yeah, who likes to do yes, yeah, to help. So and then, yeah. So if you look at you know uh, the spark, the coach, the stakeholder, the hierarchy center mm -hmm. is the client or the coachee, and on the uh, on the uh, on the right hand side bottom, okay, could be the goals, the professional, the organizational, as well as the personal. So throughout this, throughout the whole journey. Okay, in corporate, it's very important to ensure, or even private practice, to keep the client at the center of the universe. And I'll tell you very small, small things that I, I ensure I'm very mindful when I'm working with clients. And first thing is uh, how to, uh, you know, how do I maintain the trust and confidentiality? Yes. Uh, though we talk, we have an agreement, everything is there. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, what is beyond the papers? I, I would like, if I, if I, you know, I would like to feel that whether Paris can be trusted. Okay. Um, so even if I'm going to, let's say, if I'm going to meet the same person, Spock, or the stakeholder for another project, mm -hmm. uh, I make sure that I just message my client saying that I'm, I'm coming to the company. If you would like to call me for a coffee, it would be great. Okay, <clears throat> because that's the set, that's the kind of safety I ensure that the client is there. Because the client sees me there and says, "Okay, yesterday I spoke something very, very, uh, very deep, and now he's here. I don't know. Should I trust him?" Okay, so it's important to make sure that uh, you are you're in touch with your client at regular intervals, um, and also if there is a mid review, I make sure that many times the stakeholder says, "Okay, help me to know uh, how is this particular person, how is this client or coach performing?" And I say, "Let's bring him in the room, or her in the room, or them in the room. Uh, let that coach uh, give a presentation about their journey. Okay, and then let's take a review of it." So again, I'm ensuring that I'm not a management representative. I am here for my client. And that's more important for me to work with. And that's where yes. confidentiality is maintained. So yes. mid-reviews or closures, make sure that, uh, that my clients feel safe. I'm just mindful about the time, but I just thought probably I'll share this. I think personal and professional, it's so important to maintain confidentiality. Yes, thank you so much, because I believe that, you know, um, as I'm listening to you, I understand that, you know, um, it's going to be very helpful for all of us, but also understanding that, you know, I like the way you said that, you know, the, the client has to be the center of the universe. Thank you for uh, such an insightful and, uh, to be honest, very explicitly shared uh, about the process. Thank you, Dr. Paris. Uh, moving on, um, uh, so Mr. Siddhant, uh, Advocate Siddhant, uh, as we all know, coaching is a reciprocal relationship between the two parties, like two people, two stakeholders. So help us understand that how can one ensure that contract protects both the coach and the client's interests? Like as Dr. Paris was telling that it's a group effort, but along with it also, it's important to... Uh, protect the client's needs also. So, is it possible to balance uh, the two parties? Can you can we create something uh, a contract which balances both the parties? Yes, definitely. In this case, uh, as Paris had mentioned, a couple of things. Uh, that one is the sometimes when people come for coaching, they have heard a particular term, but they do not know what exactly they are going to be offered. Yeah. Okay. So their clarity of service, as I just spoke earlier yeah. also, exactly. that uh, what services are being offered, 
okay the scope of service so that is very important uh, for them to convey uh, like addressing interest of both parties with clear communication about what services the coach will offer which will in, uh, in turn of uh, ensure that there are no misconceptions about the coach client relationship there okay like if i have come here for a particular thing okay i, I have something in mind when i come to coach i come to, uh, for a coaching session okay but that is my misconception there okay because i am not a coach i do not know what i am being offered there if paris will have a clear cut agreement where he explains his scope of services properly that is the time i will get clarity on what service i am going to get and that is when i can decide if i really want this or not because if uh, i have come to paris and then he starts his training okay the coaching part and uh, then after a couple of sessions i just okay. run away because i did not want this okay then it will create a problem for me also and him also so in, so for that it is always advisable that clarity of service is there from both parties okay yeah. so here uh, firstly i talked about the coaching part now i am talking about the client so you understand better uh, then addressing the confidentiality as uh, just paris spoke that people if they do not get comfortable or if they've shared something then tomorrow whether they want to talk to you again or not is a, a big thing okay yes. so in those cases if you have written the terms and conditions also that confidentiality is there and everything is there it is how about you make them feel also that if they are comfortable if they trust you they will share okay and uh, along with that if you have the deep confidentiality clauses so that it creates a obligation on the coach okay so here the person feels very comfortable then okay that he knows that, that there is a liability on the part of coach also if he if my information is uh, shared or compromised yeah. so that will give him a mental satisfaction regarding that then if you consider about your cancellation and rescheduling uh, policies also mm-hmm. so what happens is usually the people coming for coaching do not know how it operates okay that problem will arise only when i require rescheduling if uh, those part those parts are clearly mentioned in the agreement that uh, these and these things happen this is the time period uh, in which you need to inform and uh, if in case of a two day gap or a three day gap how do you want to reschedule this because sometimes as paras said it is monthly also it is weekly also yeah. so availability of both the uh, people are, is also very important mm-hmm. so answering all these questions in your rescheduling and cancelling clause is very important then what happens is uh, a refund clause is there okay a refunding is a very big uh, interpretation that is there because if i am not comfortable with you or if i am not able to open up with you i will not want to continue coaching okay so as i uh, just mentioned in the earlier message also regarding a way out in the termination yeah, clause termination. so as important a uh, termination clause is that important this refund uh, policy is also there because what will happen is after a certain period of time i have offered you a certain discount or i have offered you certain value added propositions yeah. that i am offering you uh, special services i am offering you so in that case what will happen is it is very difficult to quantify mm-hmm. okay in between if i want to end so what will happen is uh, we will create some matrix for that uh, which will in turn help uh, even paras and even the client yeah. so in that example if we consider uh, if you quit before couple of months if you quit from 2 to 4 months if you quit after 4 months up to 6 months of service if it is there so such differentiations uh, what will happen in such cases how much amount you will get refunded or what is the procedure so such things are very important for uh, clarity for the part of the cust- for the part of the client there then defining your boundaries okay so on what lines uh, uh, the coach is going to uh, mm-hmm. take the session okay. and uh, by and what all he is going to mention okay that is very important for the other person to uh, feel comfortable in sharing firstly because he knows that he is going to go on these lines so mm-hmm. it it is better for everyone 
Okay, so these are the things that help him a lot. So, uh, so, so as as you're sharing of uh, uh, Advocate Siddhant, I see that you know it is a lot to do with building trust and also the, uh, considering people. And you know, it sounds very similar to what we do as psychologists. And uh, you know, this makes me think that you know, is this similar to what is it? I'm sure many people would have this question that you know, the kind of NDAs or the uh, agreements that we have with psychology as as therapists. So, Dr. Paras, I think uh, thank you, uh, Advocate Siddhan, for bringing this up because uh, my next question to you goes directly, Dr. Paras, to you because now you have an experience of being a uh, psychology and also in psychology and coaching. Is there a difference between like how difference is how different are the coaching that we do in therapy and also the coaching contract? So coaching contract versus the therapy contract. I'm personally excited, like very curious to know about this. Okay, so is there a difference? this is a very powerful question, and uh, and thanks Adar for establishing this aspect of uh, contract clear contracts uh, and the components. Um, so to answer about. Is there a difference? There's a huge, huge, huge difference between uh, therapy contracts and uh, coaching contracts. So let us start with a very simple thing is to understand what is coaching. And the popular definition, I would like to take it from my favorite school of learning is from ICF, the International Coaching Federation. Now ICF defines coaching as partnering with clients in a thought provoking and creative process that inspires them to maximize their personal and professional potential. The process of coaching often unlocks previously untapped sources of imagination, productivity, and leadership. If I have to just look at the keywords, I, I see it defines coaching as partnership. That means you and I together working on your goal. In a thought provoking conversation, that means uh, the conversations are gonna help you to think deeper and feeling better about yourself and creative process. creative process it could be creative process could form in terms of visualizations helping the brain to form neuro path, new neural pathway to where you want to go okay so if i ask uh, if the client says that you know i do not want to uh, i do not want to be fat okay but then the goal that in the coaching gets established in a co-creative conversation is i want to be self-disciplined i can see the difference between the two and that's possible with a thought provoking and creative conversation that we have. So the assumption, the presupposition of the assumption, the presupposition what coaching has is the client is uh, resourceful, accountable, and has all the resources to solve their problems. So the client is ready. The client is a teacher, the coach is a student. The student is a learner, observer, curious. Co uh, client is a teacher. That means the client knows what he or she is bringing in the room. Uh, he or she or they know is that what they want to take away from that discussion. They're not looking for an advice. They're not looking for mentoring. They're not looking for any sort of solution from you, but they are looking for clarity of their data. That's where I look at coaching. Now let's look at what is psychotherapy contracts. Contract. So the definition of psychotherapy is, is a type of treatment that help individuals experiencing a wide array of mental health conditions yes. and emotional challenges. So DSM-4-5, if you look back, yes. you know, uh, there are different mental challenges that people may go through, assessing, okay? So one gets professional license to practice and it is governed by the country law, whether you are in Europe, whether you're in the US, whether you're in India. Okay? So if you look at therapy contracts, that are more, uh, they work on the basis of assessment, diagnosis, problem yeah. definition and treatment. So I see there's a complete different nothing altogether, okay? The, because in, in, in counseling and therapy, we also go into the data, information, content, while in coaching, we look at context, okay? So in counseling or therapy can sometimes be didactical. So that means yes. this, do that, this is what you need to do, okay? And there is an expectation that for the client is, okay, my therapist has told me I'm gonna do it. In coaching is the opposite. In coaching, uh, there is no advice, there is no suggestions, there's a co-creative conversation, helping them to reframe from where they are and where they would like to go. So I, I look at these two contracts as a very separate entity, okay? Unless you're qualified for both, like both. Yes. for both services, then I have clear contracts in terms of 
what do I offer and what are you seeking for? Okay. Yeah, yeah, sometimes client is looking for a holistic service yes. where they want to include mindfulness, they like to also include meditation, they also like to include coaching. But if you're doing coaching, you need to stick to that. If you're doing therapy, stick to that. You can't mix things down. So that's a very defined concept. Yeah. yeah, so that's how I could I could look at this question. Very nice question, right? You know, so yeah, I, I was personally very um, engaged in this, and I was just thinking that you know, probably I found my next topic webinar topic <laughs> while we discuss because I think uh, many of them would be quite you know wondering about this difference when I see that it's it's a um, it could lead to confusions and there's a thin line difference. But yes, people need to know. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Paras, for this. And this conversation is extremely helpful with all of you. Now we're moving on to uh, Advocate Metri. Okay. Advocate Metri, and um, I'm bringing to you a very important question. Now that we know from Dr. Paras and Advocate Sadan that coaching is important, with that contracting with coaching is imperative, we know now, now, now know the key elements that are required in it. Now, let me ask you, how important is contracting in coaching as a field? So, uh, perfect question. Yeah, yeah. Amazing <laughs> question. Thank you. <laughs> so, yeah. So, as like by now in this webinar, we know that how important it is that whenever there is an exchange of, say, a product or a service between two people, it's it's so important to have it have it in a written document. Right. And it's just that simple. That written document is your agreement. Mm -hmm. and, and let's let's just let's just forget the jargons. Let's just understand. It's like there are two parties. You are into a mutual promise that this is what you will give and this is what I will offer. It's it's mutual promise, which is legally enforceable, becomes a contract. Okay. I know that when 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 a lot of non-lawyer people hear the word contract, they get very baffled and they get very yes. They, they have this very strong connotation that oh my god, it's going to be something so serious and so out of my scope that I don't even want to delve into it. I but let's, let's just break it down and understand that it is to make your lives easier and not to increase your hassle. That's that's a very important message that I as a lawyer want to give to everybody who is entering into any kind of service. So now that all of us are on the same note about contract and the importance of contract, let's now let's now apply these principles to this industry, the coaching industry that we are discussing yes. today. So uh, as advocate advocate Sidan and Dr. Paris and everybody focused on clarity. Now I understand, we all understand by now that clarity is so important because that is the base, that is the base of your contract in such a way that that is exactly the area where you will specify what will you provide, what will you get, how will you get. So all those whys and whats and hows are clarified and we will make sure that whenever we draft a contract for you, we will write it down in explicit details. But in my experience so far working with counselors and, and, and coaches and everything, they just come up with one thing. But Maitri, we don't know from now what are the techniques we are going to use. It's a very interactive uh, process. We can't say today sitting here without even talking to a client that this is how we're going to go about. But that's not a problem. I mean, I understand it can be a very practical problem if we have something very restrictive written in our clause because then it restricts your flexibility as a coach to use your knowledge in a very interactive manner. As in when you get more details about your client, you would want to alter your process and which is completely yeah. understandable. That is exactly where we will make sure that we draft your contract in such a way. We, we mention languages like coach has the liberty to alter the process or alter the techniques that they are going to use during the journey of your coaching. Some some sentence like this will, will not restrict your creativity, will not restrict your intention to help the client. But all the more, it will give you so much more scope. It will widen your scope without making it ambiguous. So this is exactly where, yes. why you need a well-drafted scope clause in your contract. Yes. 
because we understand that the nature of this relationship the client and coach relationship is very personal and intimate so nothing can be set in stone but at the same time if you keep it vague you are attracting trouble and both the parties not just the coach but the client is also attracting trouble and we we do not want that it is such an altruistic profession that we want to keep it that way so that's where yeah so that's where the clarity point becomes important the the scope clause becomes important then moving on to another important point here another so so i'm just drawing these examples from my experience so far working with coaches another okay. important thing which a lot of problem a lot of time coaches come with me is that i don't know when the client comes and tells me i am not happy with your service i'm done with you we do not know what does that even done your best but we do not know what to do with such a claim so that is where we as lawyers we try to bring in some kind of quantifiable metric into your agreement so what i really mean by this is that in your contract we will say include something like a uh, a feedback a feedback form will be filled every month or okay. a feedback mm-hmm. session will be con- uh, will be done every month okay. what by doing this what we have is we create data which is more tangible yes measurable And so yes yes so when we have tangible data we can say that on this particular date after so many sessions you said that you were happy with our service you said that whatever we are doing whatever techniques that you as a coach are applying working. is working for the client okay. and so this claim if they come and say that oh i am not happy or nothing has happened is baseless because we have data to corroborate our claim that no we did our best and you were happy so far and another thing another very important thing which happens in uh, coaching which i have understood so far is that many a times the coach it's 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 a very self evolving evolving technique all the work is to be done by the client coach is there to nudge you so the coaches will give you some techniques to follow after the session which the client will not and then the client will come and say oh i don't see any improvement so by introducing such metrics and tangible ways of judging your journey and your progress towards your goal yeah. it becomes so much more clear and so much more defined as a coach that you did your job and you did it well yeah systematic way to yes yes to so it's it's the quantifying the the yes. making it quantifiable the making the journey quantifiable is another very important thing then we are moving on to the financial clarity what happens is first time clients are very skeptical skeptical about even availing the service and that is why when it comes to paying the fees up front or even paying for the first session is such a task for the coaches i understand that i have i've gone through that so so here is when we come and we draft the contracts and we tweak it according to the client's needs if the coach comes and tells us okay. that you know okay. maybe let's structure in such a way that the first the first session will be an introductory session and let's not charge for that and later on let's have a package bundle where we will charge for three sessions so they pay up front for three sessions and then from fourth session we can do it per session and the frequency of payment or do you want it session wise or do you want it monthly so these are the nuances that we can always work out which will be in favor of the client and the coach and what happens yeah, is that by yeah. doing this you also give the client so much trust that you are not here to just take their money and go away you are here to genuinely yeah. help and these are the ways where you can create trust trust is not just by saying that oh you can trust me or oh, your information is secure with yeah. me it's by these yeah. methods that you build your own credibility as a coach yeah. and these are the sensitive areas which we tackle in our contract to make sure that both the parties are comfortable and safeguarded so that there uh, there comes the financial uh, clarity part and an, again another important part in financial clarity which advocate siddhant also very uh, rightly pronounced was that the cancellation of your or the uh, oh, cancellation yes. of your sessions mm-hmm. that is a potential loss of 
your money as a coach you are put you have so much potential loss of your further clients or like you know when you you free your time for them and you also put in effort so okay. it's the time okay. of effort that you put before the session and the time slot that you kept empty for that session okay. it's the cumulative time and energy and all things that went behind it so it's just it's only fair to have a proper mechanism of cancellation or delaying your session and those things also we can tweak and we can tweak according to the client according to the need yeah. of the coach okay. okay so so these are also very important safeguards that we set in our agreement again cancellation policy sidan pronounced same same similar financial and cancellation coming together then again confidentiality dr paras and sidan spoke volumes about how important that is but i also want to draw just another angle to here is that it's not only the confidentiality of the client but also the confidentiality of the material that the coach himself uses in his journey yes, yes. because because what happens is you as a coach are also building a brand value for yourself and that is because of so much r and d and so much effort and thought that you have put with your past experience that makes you the coach that you are so you wouldn't want your material to be misused by everybody when you as a person have thought through it so much so as much as client information is important the the proprietary methods and the information that is shared during the sessions by the coach is equally important so when we draft a confidentiality contract we make sure that there is there is a duty on both the parties to ensure that the information stays within this forum so that that clause is also drafted accordingly another another very important clause is the dispute resolution clause we all know there is scope for conflict and there is scope for dispute here and as a layman what everybody thinks is if there is a contract and then the contract is disputed you go to the courts and courts are tedious nobody wants to do that but that is exactly where what we do is we we inculcate some alternate source of dispute resolution into our contract only which is legally binding so mind well only because you're not going to the courts doesn't mean these resolutions are not binding they are very much binding but at the same time they are cost effective and time effective for example yeah. first of all we will always appreciate some kind of negotiation between the party and then if at all the dispute is resolved if yeah. it doesn't happen we then go to a mutually appointed mediator this mediator is generally an expert in your industry with a vast experience okay. so okay. what happens is that what happens is that the the client and the coach feels heard and understood that whatever issues that we are facing right now when we tell it to a neutral third party because of his expertise and experience in this arena in this profession he or she will be a good judge to help us resolve our problem yeah. so there comes the credibility mm -hmm. also and there comes the ease of managing the whole dispute again if this channel also fails for some reason we also can appoint an arbitrator now arbitrators are a list of profession so like every court has a list of people who are appointed court appointed arbitrators okay. who solve these disputes outside the court similar okay. to mediation but these are appointed by court okay. they may not necessarily from the profession from the industry okay. but these are all well known advocates retired judges so they know the law they know justice okay. yeah again yeah. another source of credibility but time it is it's not that time consuming and it's also very personal because again and that happens here in such forums in mediation in arbitration and of course the last and foremost we can always go to the courts yeah. so by making it this step process we are also ensuring that the dispute resolution part is is also not very tedious and it's not very taxing on either of the parties mm -hmm. this is how this, uh, this is how a, a contract the sla contract for a coach for a coaching industry will benefit both the parties and the last the last clause which one of the important clauses which uh, advocate sidant highlighted which can work in our favor is the list of 
waivers or the limitation liability clauses. Yes. Because, yes. yes, Advocate Siddhan mentioned, and I will tell you why it is so important. Okay. Because just continuing Dr. Paris's example, mm -hmm. when he said that, say, a, a client comes and tells you that I want to lose weight, you are not a dietitian. You will not help, you will not give a formula to lose weight. You will not go and tell him or her that don't eat this and don't eat that. Yes. What you as a coach are going to work is on their consistency, maybe their intrinsic motivation. Yes. Maybe their body image issues, maybe the concept of self-acceptance. So when we when we set such boundaries and when we make these waiver clauses, we we free ourselves from unnecessary demands that might be created, associated demands that might get created, but which does not actually apply to you. So by mm -hmm. defining it very explicitly, you make sure that both the parties are clear on the rights and obligations when you enter in this mutual relationship yes. so okay. so so yeah like as i said these are some of the very important, important. areas yeah, why where, exactly. where, yeah these contracts the, the the clauses the contracting legal language of contracting can facilitate your journey and your relationship with your client yes. Thank you, Maitri. I, I look at Maitri. I think this has brought a lot of clarity also for our coaches who attend in several numbers uh, in our sessions because um, it is quite um, uh, interesting to also learn from your personal observations and how uh, it has led to these experiences and also that led to all of us to know about um, this information. But, um, it's quite detailed and I'm sure that's going to be very interesting for also people who have joined us today. So I think considering time, I don't want, I do not want to miss a lot of uh, important questions, but we also have, um, uh, we've got great feedback from people who are joining us. We have one quick question. I do not want to uh, miss this question from Manoj Patil. What are the specific things you advise to include in contracting with corporate clients? And one interesting feedback is very informative session. Many things are clarified. Thank you, Asha. Thank you for your feedback right away. Can we quickly touch upon Manoj's question, uh, Dr. Paras, or uh, like, you know, could you help us with this? Uh, because I do not want to miss questions from the coming from our audience. Yeah. So before that, I would like to invite uh, Advocate Siddhan, if you'd like to uh, you know, talk about this uh, in terms of what are the, how do we advise contracting with corporate clients? <clears throat> Before I could share some thoughts, maybe if you yes, yes. your expertise here. Okay, so here what happens is uh, when we are the we as a coach are the people signing the contract. The most important issue here comes is that we will be signing a set format that they set, which will be from the part a point of view of the corporate. Okay, so in that case, who will take care of our beneficial interests? That is the most important thing. Okay, because everything is set according to the needs of the corporate. They need to be fulfilled. But here, what happens is always you need to get these agreements vetted by a lawyer so that uh, your personal interest in all the aspects of rescheduling, refunds, whether refund is applicable, whether rescheduling is applicable, what is the scope of service that I'm getting into? What is the thing that they they want and uh, is that what I can offer? Are there any specific conditions or restrictions being put on me uh, which are uh, really unreasonable? So all of these aspects and the uh, applicable laws as well of jurisdiction or, and other laws uh, of contract that apply, they need to be taken care of. So it is always advisable that uh, such agreements which come from corporates need to be vetted by lawyers sure. and advocate maitri will expand further yeah sure sure so like as as advocate sadan said you need to vet these contracts with a lawyer and i'll tell you why is because what generally happens is when you are dealing with big conglomerates it's just a basic tendency of us as a solo unit to assume that because they are so big and because the contracts are so standard and set in stone we do not have a bargaining power but let me tell you that's never the case that is never ever the case when it's a contract both the parties have equal bargaining power okay okay now that we know this yes now that we know this when you get such a contract from any any mnc or any corporate what you do is what ideally a person should do is read the contract 
you might be uncomfortable with certain details or certain way the business is going to be conducted you go and speak to the lawyer you show them the contract that or that lawyer will read through the contract and discuss with you what are your areas of issue where do you think you are short changed as against the company and that's when you can redraft those clauses or or you can include some other details that you want to and send a draft to the corporate they are bound to read it they are bound to understand and there will always be a healthy negotiation it's not the case that you just sign it blindly and quietly yeah. and you are just on board it don't do that use your bargaining power and you can very well just come to a lawyer get it vetted get into good negotiation and then go forward when you are comfortable with all the details of the contract Wow, that's so powerful. I hope that helps. Yes, Dr. Paras, would you want to? So, uh, so for personal, I think uh, Siddhant, Advocate Siddhant and Advocate Maitri has already answered. I think I don't have much to add here, but uh, mostly clients provide feedback, uh, sorry, provide the contracts. And uh, my first thing is to go to my lawyer, okay, and uh, take and review it. What is it for me? What is it not for me? And I think Maitri, you really pointed out very clearly that you know we need to uh, take leave. Like if I have, if I'm not feeling well, I go to a doctor, okay. But if uh, if I need to, uh, you know, a clarity in life, I go to a coach. In the same way, yeah. uh, when I am, I need uh, support and understanding agreements. I need to have an expertise, and I and I think reaching out to a professional always support. So, uh, so yeah. So I think that's something which uh, which sums for me in terms of uh, you know, corporate clients contacting. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Parul. You received the feedback from Manoj saying that makes sense. And okay, so now there are going to be thank you, thank you, Manoj, for uh, bringing this question to us because uh, uh, we understand that this session is you know really helpful for each one of us. Um, I uh, moving on. Uh, we just have quick one or two questions to all three of you. First, a one common question to Dr. Ma uh, to uh, Advocate Maitri and Dr. Paras that you know, because we know, can you help our audience to understand that you know, with the changes that happen in the legal systems and the re regulations, we know that amendments happen. So, how do coaches stay updated with what's happening with the law world and what's happening with the coaching industry? And quickly, can you just tell us uh, because we don't have much time. So how do they, where do they get updated to seek more information quickly? Thank you. Dr. Paras, I'll go first. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Thank you. So, uh, this is a very correct question. Uh, and here, I think I would like to divide updates in two parts. It's the legal updates first, which happens in the legal spectrum of any country that you are okay. functioning in. Yes, yes. And then there is another updates, which comes from the institute that you're affiliated with, say ICF. Okay. So now I wouldn't even it's it's it will be very unreasonable for me to ask a non-lawyer to go and track all the legal updates. Not not viable, not feasible, and let's not. But what you as a coach, as a coach into this profession can do is you can very actively stay abreast with all the changes that come up on your institute website, say ICF website, because they keep they keep keeping their ethical code of conduct. They keep. Yes. They also keep uh, discussing and uh, putting up material regarding the mishaps that happen to the members. Others can learn from the other institutions. Uh, I think it's I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm able to hear you. Yes. Voice. You, yes. Am I, am I audible? Yeah. Could you start? Yes. Yeah. 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 So as I was saying that, as a as a coach. It's very essential that you stay abreast with these changes in, say, ICF guidelines, and also and also be aware of what are the issues that other members are facing, which they will upload on the website, so that you can collectively learn from others' yeah. issues and make sure that you are on top of the changes. Okay, that's okay. the advice I would give. Okay, thank you, thank you. Like we said, yes, Dr. Paris, from you. So, so I think uh, something that uh, resonates with me is to be updated with ICF uh, Code of Ethics, uh, Code okay. of Conduct. Okay, uh, if you go to ICF website, there is a lot of resource on ethics and case studies. Okay, so I feel personally, if there is anything, whatever you bring in your contract. Okay, and if you're an ICF certified coach. Also, you bring in what ICEF believes in, because that's what I, I feel very proud to be an ICEF certified coach. 
uh, uh, following the practices of coaching and uh, till whatever I have been years in my journey, apart from my experience, my learnings, uh, a lot of contribution goes to ICF because there was a streamline uh, uh, the coaching uh, as, a, as, a, as a profession for everyone. So it's a global body. So what happens is you get to not just learn by the by a particular country, but you learn globally. Uh, what are the ethical practices? It's okay and not okay uh, to do that. So uh, so there are many webinars I think ICIP offers. Okay, so it's good to attend. Or being on the ICIP website, that's one of the best resources. Yeah. And second is what my is brought in by your law, by your entity country. Just be in touch with your legal uh, support and check if, if there are any changing things. How can we be more mindful? The coaching is not a regulated body, okay, like psychology, a psychologist, or maybe say a doctor, a medical doctor, or a lawyer, or maybe a CS, okay. But it's very important uh, to be mindful about uh, how are you as a person, you know, how are you mindful about your practices? So I always like to say that do I put my right hand on my heart and say, am I doing it correctly? And I think that's one thing that helps me to keep growing and being updated uh, globally uh, as well as locally. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you. Very important. Uh, thank you, Dr. Paras. Um, thank you, uh, Advocate Maitri. Um, Mr. Siddhant, I want to um, ask uh, one important question to you uh, before we close the conversation. It is uh, when it comes to, like, when a coach comes for drafting the coaching agreement, so we talked about the process. Is there something that you would wish to add? Apart from that, uh, I'm just throwing questions to each one of you so that you know we all start in uh, together. Dr. Paras, I would like you to focus on what are the ethical issues, common ethical issues that people, like coaches could experience. And uh, Maitri, uh, to you, that can we mix and match contracts? So let me begin with uh, probably um, uh, Advocate Siddhant of, you know, any lasting points for, you know, what the process is followed for Okay, so as a coach, uh, your paramount, paramount goal is to effectively guide your clients, help them ride the waves of challenges and unlock your potential. Okay. So to do this effectively, having a SLA working quietly in the backdrop to handle the safety and legal aspects is very, very crucial here. Okay. okay, so this is where we can help you by offering specialized guidance in uh, deciphering the complexities of SLAs and ensuring they equip you with steadfast protection there okay so as coaching success metrics from the foundation of your service which was talked about by maitri uh, recently that is very important so uh, we tailor make such things customized solutions <coughs> for you depending on the complexities that you might face okay the, the next step in our approach to anticipate the potential risks faced by professionals in your coaching room so this allows us to address these potential issues even before they occur uh, this proactively is, uh, pro proactive uh, proactivity is taken a step further to preserve your protection in your sla so we firmly believe that in maintaining the qualitative pulse of your coaching relationship this is where monthly feedback forms come into picture that were said right. by maitri okay right. so such things will always help you in uh, quantifying the uh, the success of your coaching so our work doesn't end here with tackling uh, problems post incorporation of all these key assets we meticulously craft each sla clause in uh, consultation okay. with you mm -hmm. so that is where we get inputs from you regarding what is the requirement of uh, your uh, particular industry or what is the uh, thing that you want so accordingly then we draft all the things okay. so uh, in a coaching industry that expands beyond borders, resolving disputes arising from international contracts can become a complex uh, issue here due to diverging national laws. So yes. deciding jurisdiction which stipulates each country's laws, which country's laws apply, where disputes are settled becomes a very big challenge. So we analyze your situation, its potential risk reward trade off and guide you through available jurisdictional options here. Okay. So once you've assimilated your inputs, we craft the jurisdiction clause in your SLA. Okay. Okay. So this will safeguard your unanticipated jurisdictional issues mm -hmm. and uh, uh, informed consent. Okay. So addressing informed consent requirements in the agreement consistent with the ISCF, uh, ICF code of ethics. 
shows the coach's professionalism and commitment to ethical conduct. This aspect <clears throat> ensures the client that the coaching process will be conducted with complete transparency. So, which will allow them to enter it open-eyed and confidently. So, this is the procedure what we follow and this is how we help. Thank you. Thank you, Advocate Sindhar. Very helpful. Uh, uh, in relationship with the same question, like uh, Maitri, uh, Advocate Maitri, could you help us to know that like, exactly what Advocate Sindhar said? Like, then now is it possible to mix and match contracts? <laughs> yes, so, Priyanka, sure. So, um, Priyanka, I think it's not only, it's not just about possible, I think one should. And one should because clients are different. Each client that you cater to is different. Each scope that you have to work on is different. So, it's... It's, it's not useful to have one blanket agreement and put it for everybody because the whole purpose is defeated. Yeah, so, so the whole purpose is defeated and it shouldn't be like that. You very well should customize your contracts because that is how you will safeguard yourself in every situation because every client comes up with every new challenge. Yes. And you and the lawyer will sit together. You will preempt those challenges. You will make sure how to get a better understanding of those challenges and how to resolve it. So it's 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 it goes from cautionary to resolution. The entire journey has to be captured in your contract in a way that suits you as opposed to the peculiarities of the client that you are catering to. So yes, mix and match, yes. customization is done. very <laughs> much required. <laughs> yes. And may I just highlight another point here is that because as I just said, how customization is the key because yes. that is yes. exactly why you are drafting a contract in your first place. Downloading yes. your contracts from Google will not help. It Very never important. does. It never does. It is as good as not having a contract. Because there are so many loose ends. The scope is not well defined. The, the methodology is not properly set in. There are so many loose ends. Which, Whenever there is a loose end, there is a scope for changing the context. When you change the context, you give rise to so many different disputes that you did not even fathom. Mm -hmm. So the entire mm -hmm. purpose gets diluted. So it is not just mere paperwork for the sake of it. It is really purposeful to help you, to actually prevent you from any trouble. So yeah, that's, I, that's what I would like to say. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that was a very uh, important uh, Underlying <laughs> disclaimer, I would want to give you absolutely. Thank you, thank you, Advocate Maitri. Dr. Paras, we talked about what are the quick ethical issues, and also if I would request you to share your journey with how, uh, with your with uh, Mr. Uh, Advocate Siddhant's association with Matron before we end this webinar. Sure, sure. So I'm very mindful about the time, so I'm going to keep it short, but we will yes. definitely have another session on ethics yes. in the coming future uh, in our sessions. But I think ethics is some, some sort of uh, something that resonates with me is uh, uh, being, are we watchful about our behaviors? Are we watchful about what we think, what we do, and how it is congruent? Okay. Now, I said defines for coaches, uh, I said code of ethics, and I feel those are so powerful. Even if you implement it, simple, easy to follow. Uh, one of them that I could give you an example about was, uh, there was one of the, uh, I'm just changing a bit of context, a lot of context, so I don't bring anything confidential information. So I had one of the clients uh, uh, who was uh, going through some sort of, uh, was an expat and was going through some sort of uh, uh, legal issues in the, with a the partner. And uh, and the son uh, or daughter, I do not remember now, was looking for uh, coaching because they were getting impacted by the whole uh, environment. Uh, first, micro getting in, they're getting to India and the change of culture and lifestyle and all that. And when I when I shared the SLA, the service level agreement, the client said, I don't want to get get there because this can also uh, be used in the court. Okay, and I was in a dilemma. I said. This is something which would be very unethical for me to sign a con not sign a contract and and go for a service, yes. uh, and this was an ethical dilemma for me. So so practically and uh, you know and technically, I did a lot of supervision for myself. I went to multiple coaches, legal system. I reached out to even advocates a dance, and I decided not to get into that because if if the person is not ready uh, to sign, that means the person is not ready to get into a coaching somewhere the other way. 
You know, it's not, you're not, uh, not you're emotionally you require this need, but maybe uh, cognitively are you, because there's no safety without a contract, you know, so it's, there's no North, North Star, we are in different directions and you said and I said, so it was very good for me to take a pause and say, uh, I, I'm so sorry, I would not be able to do that and I'm feeling very bad about it uh, because you also have a genuine reason, but then this will only work if we have a clear agreements, not just verbal, but also in terms of written agreements. And I think that's one of the ethical dilemma I, I went through. And for me, it is not because whatever decisions we take, uh, it's not just impacting me, my profession as a coach, my role as a coach, as a trainer, as a coach, okay? The new coaches who are joining in, okay? And the coaching as a whole profession. So very important to look at ethics, not only from angle of what is your behavior, but the impact of my behavior for the future. So, so yeah, I'm very mindful and I'm very thankful, first of all, that uh, all my contracts um, you know, from, from the time I, I and, and, and what Maitri, I look at Maitri talked about that, you know, Google cannot give you contracts and neither AI can give you. Okay, reaching out to a lawyer, and that's always has been my journey. I think I reached out to him much before the AI was chat GPT was uh, launched or something, or Google uh, was showing different, different contracts. But then uh, reaching out to him helped me a lot to design uh, contracts for coaching, contracts for therapy, contracts for clients, uh, contracts for trainings. Uh, different matrix is a premium program program so we offer coach training we offer nlp we offer yes. counseling so various products mindfulness so, so it's, and then i said can't we use this and he said Taurus, uh, these uh, services are different are the same service i said the training is same but you know there are many other things that needs to be altered and i'm so grateful that i met uh, advocates at the right time and uh, and i would say to every coaches and uh, other professionals who are attending it that uh, having the legal support can always be very helpful. And if you want to reach out to him, uh, the best way is to connect with him. I'm going to be showcasing you immediately after this call uh, or during this call, his details. You, and this will be active on LinkedIn and also on Vimeo and uh, Facebook. So you can yes. YouTube. So you can always check the number within the comment section as well. So yeah, it was wonderful being with him and, uh, and it looks very great today, very promising set. So inspired, you know, like a co-creative conversation on uh, on the decoding contracts. Yeah. Yes, thank you, thank you, Dr. Paras. Uh, it, it is a wonderful, as you said, it's a wonderful platform, you know, to exchange knowledge, personal experiences, and I found it very engaging with all of you. Although, you know, and you guys made it so simple because I feel that you know exactly when Maitri pointed out, like you know, it's such a complex thing, but then you just have to understand it simplistically. You help us to understand. You know, and I realize that, you know, contracting is also important. But then with you guys, it's important. We now know the reasons why. So quickly before we end, um, uh, Maitri, uh, we have some feedback from Deepa uh, saying that it's a very informative session. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Deepa. Thank you for your prompt feedback. Uh, we have, um, I have just one last question, uh, Maitri and Sadan, because you are from the world of law. Uh, the one important message for our fellow coaches. Just maybe uh, you can take turns and you can decide one important message. And then, Dr. Paris, you as a coach, one important message. Yes. Mm. Yes, don't look at that. That you want to go. Okay, I'll go first. Okay. Yes. So, one important message. again, just reiterating what I just said. Go to a lawyer, don't Google, because a stitch in time saves nine. <laughs> I am telling you, it works. <laughs> Advocate Siddharth. Okay, so I have a small message for everyone. You're at the coaching battlefield charging without an SLA. Brave, but let's say reminded us of a knight charging into battle, forgetting his armor back at the castle. Trust us, we do not want to realize you needed an SLA after a problem pulls the rug from under the coaching chair. And as they say in India, no offender is a culprit until proven guilty, beyond reasonable doubt. So why leave anything to doubt? Consider your robust SLA as your Brahmastra, that, your, that is your ultimate weapon in the arsenal. Let us handle the legal warfare so that you can uh, lead your troops effectively. That is your clients. Thank loved you. it. I loved it. Thank Very you. Cool. Thank you. Dr. Paras, yes. So so for me, it's very simple. I think ABC, that's always be contracted, always be contracted, not only just in agreements, but in relationships everywhere. So there is a lot of peace of mind, calmness, and a lot of success in uh, in coaching and client journey. So I think ABC is very important. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Paras. Thank you, Advocate Maitri. Thank you, Advocate 
Siddhan for joining us today for an exciting session. I'm sure we're going to have a version two of this because we've got amazing feedback. We have a lot of questions. We'll note them. We'll get back to you with this. We're sorry for extending it, but I'm sure it was very important for us to understand. For everyone who's joining us today, thank you very much. In case you've registered for the free ICFCC certificate, Dr. Paras, help us. The password is on the screen. I would, uh, I would just quickly dictate. It's capital S, capital O, small A, capital Q, T, P. Thank you. We have got uh, lovely feedback from our audience coming in. Uh, we have our next, uh, Dr. Paras informed us, we also have it on our website available that we are next. the next batch is starting like last week of April 2024. All the programs that are on the matrix. The contact number you see is on it. Thank you everyone for joining me today. Thank you, Maitri. Thank you all the experts. Thank you audience. And um, finally, I feel um, very happy that I'm a part of these episodes because uh, there will be several people like me who will, who, who will have many questions about coaching and contracting. And I believe Matrix is a wonderful platform that provides an information for all of us like this. And uh, I'll be back again with an exciting session uh, next month. So till then, stay tuned. Uh, we're happy to connect with you through Matrix. We'll be back again. Thank you, everyone. I'm Priyanka. Have a great weekend ahead. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.